Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to use Flowify and some other plugins uh, to create geometry that is a tire. And it's for creating some high resolution models. So this isn't something you'd put in a kind of a tire, you'd put in uh, an architectural scene. It's more of a tire you might put on a car design. So here's how we start off, uh, uh, create this little, what I call a spoke, it's a reference thing uh, area. And I'm gonna draw a circle with 64 sides and I'm going to set it, uh, set it up uh, in the center of the screen. Then I'm going to build my profile. And I'm using arc. And again, I'm only using four sides for these arcs. So I'm keeping it, even though it's going to be a high, poly, a high polygon tire, I'm still keeping these relatively simple. So, and you can see uh, uh, the actual geometry of, of what we're going to use when we use follow me. So once we get here, uh, we will select, uh, uh, we'll actually uh, yeah, move the profile in position and then use the curve select tool, select it and use follow me. And now we have our, our actual object. Now, uh, flow if I only use quads, we'll talk a little bit about that in, in a second, but I want to make sure that we're getting rid of all the quads. Uh, now we're going to soft and smooth edges so we can get rid of that interiors, uh, that interior face as well. So got rid of that, got rid of this extra line. And now, uh, now we're ready to set up Flowify. So this is uh, one of the first parts of it. You can see this is all quads. Uh, I want to actually delete. I'm only going to make half of the tire, so I'm going to delete part of it. But notice I'm not deleting a complete half. I'm leaving a little bit on there because it's important because uh, for, for the half to actually render correctly in Flowify, you need to actually uh, extend it just a tad bit more. So I've, I've, I've gone one, basically one loop uh, offset on either side of that. So now I've, I've got my, basically my template. Uh, uh, this is the surface that I'm going to flow onto. Um, and now that I've got this set up, I want to make sure I've scaled it. I'm using 200 units uh, large because I'm, I'm going to do a lot of booleans and I want to make sure I have enough area. Now, we know that the circumference, wrong spelling, uh, is uh, equals pi, uh, two times two pi r. And because we have 100, then basically, uh, and we're doing half of it, we're going to know that since our radius is 100, we're, we're going to only need to create uh, 314, uh, a rectangle 314 long by whatever width we think is about right. So that's type in 314 by 60, uh, adjusting the width here a little bit on this. I'll move this rectangle around, group it, move it around. Now I'm going to hook up, I'm going to tell Flowify you know, what point goes to what part in this particular record. So this rectangle is what we're going to use to lay out our tire treads. I group everything. I'm going to call it tire, uh, or tire Flowify Support Group. And now I can uh, save it. Now what I want to do is I want to double check on Flowify and see if it's going to be able to, uh, and it did. Uh, uh, actually, let me show it here. Let's make sure it's quad, a quad. Now I'm going to use Flowify and make sure that we can impose a grid. So we're going to take the, actually the grid that's on the, the mesh and we're going to impose it directly onto the plane and there, bing, it works. So now we know Flowify is set up correctly. Okay, so the next thing we're going to, want to do is we're going to build our tire tread uh, and we build it directly on top of our, our rectangle platform here. But we're, going to, we're not going to go all the way to the ends of the platform just because uh, we're only, uh, as you recall, we, we did a little bit of an offset uh, when we built our, 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 our surface template. So as I build the, uh, the tire tread uh, area, uh, I'm going to end up focusing on, on making sure that I don't go all the way over to the, uh, to this, uh, to the end. And you'll see how that works. It'll just basically snap, uh, draw a rectangle and it'll snap directly, directly on. Um, I should mention also, it doesn't really matter if these faces are reversed or not in this case. It's not going to make a big difference. It will later, of course, but, but this is just, again, our tire flowify support part of the file. So, um, uh, so now I'm, draw, I'm going to draw that rectangle. So you see, I only go, only, I don't go completely all the way across. I leave one, one row off, and now I'm going to go up four inches or four uh, units, uh, which is the, basically going to be the thickness of the tire, the rubber thickness of the rubber. So now you can see that uh, I've got that. Now I've imported, I've just dragged and dropped an actual tire texture I found on the web. I'm going to rotate it into place. Uh, and once I get it rotated in place and 
positioned where I want it, um, I'll be sure to uh, start to trace down the actual individual entities. Now, one of the things that I've done is I'm creating, sometimes tires aren't, uh, they may be repeating, but sometimes they're repeating it in different numbers. And I'm going to show uh, how we do two different repeat, repeats here. So I'm going to start off with um, uh, editing uh, this. Notice it's, it's not all the way to the edge, so I'm going to draw these, these guys in. Again, uh, I'm trying to limit my resolution to geometry. Um, I'm just copying and moving line segments here to make this work. Uh, and then I'm going to use an arc tool and again, only three, only three segments on that again, they're very small. And then I'll uh, take all this and move it down, move it down here. And then I'll draw this next one. And again, I'm not going to really focus too much on adding radiuses because it's just, don't need to add that much extra detail. Now I'm going to draw the last one. The last one here is going to be, I'm not going to use the same repeat as I do for the others. Even though this tire pattern does have that same repeat, I'm not going to be using it. So let's see that. And I'll show how that works here in a second. Um, so I'm overlapping that a little bit because I know I'm going to have to subtract these products, these from, from that original tire base. So that's why the overlap. Uh, now let's look at uh, uh, copy, copy those and uh, we're going to paste them in place. And let's uh, make a component out of them and then we're going to drag them to this, that center. Make sure we line up that center with that part uh, right there. So we have the center. So we know that that's the center and I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to take that and copy it. And now we're going to divide it by 19. Nope. 16, nope, 14, yeah, that's the one. In fact, let's view the original tire tread. Yeah, that looks about right. So, okay, so now I've got that set up. Um, now let's go back into the, uh, uh, let's group all these and let's go back into the uh, original uh, or the uh, other piece of the tile. So copy that, hide, uh, and let's paste that and do exactly the same thing. In this case, though, we're not going to group it. No, this is not necessary to group it. Let's just uh, or make a component out of it. Uh, I'm going to move it down and align it correctly as we did with the previous one. Drop it down to the, the actual face. And then this time I'm not going to use the 14, I'm use a different number. Let's do uh, 12. Okay, now I'll select all of these and we'll use a cleanup tool to merge the faces and, and come in and just delete a few of these. So now that they're done, uh, we've got uh, our tire tread set up. Uh, let's go in and let's extrude it one and a half units in either direction. Let's do the same here. We'll have to actually, in this case, we go into the component to extrude. One and a half inch. That's why we make components out of them. And explode all the components. <coughs> okay. Now, double check, make sure everything's solid using Solid Inspector, a great tool. If we've done that, we can start now to uh, basically do subtractions. And every time we do a subtraction, I'll use some Solid Inspector uh, uh, again to check on it. So that works. Out. I think there's some other plugins that can do Boolean subtractions also. So if you don't have the Pro version of SketchUp, you can probably figure out how to get that done as well. Um, uh, so now I've used Flowify, and you can see I've put it, I've actually created the actual surface, and it looks great. Uh, only problem is that it's solid. It's the opposite. Uh, the treads are, are going the wrong direction. So now I need to go in and basically rebuild, uh, or, or not rebuild this, but just have the treads going out instead of in, in. And that's just a simple thing by using a double click and a push pull to uh, walk through each one of these faces and build them. I also noticed that this didn't quite get done correctly at the very end there. You can see it's not going to be a, a perfect match when I, when I go to, uh, uh, to see, it's not going to be a seamless area. So I'll just grab these two edges, copy and paste them, or copy and move them, and, uh, and then just draw this in and use push pull and get it back to where. Now nah, we're good. Okay, so now we take this, use Flowify, and Bob's your uncle. All right, looks good, and that looks like a pretty good, pretty good track. So I'm using the mirror command. I really like that mirror command. 
because this is the back of the tower. The back of the tower is not going to have text on it, so I don't need to build that, all that geometry. So let's go ahead and put some text on the front of the tire, on the side wall, um, three inches, and we'll set it up. We'll uh, rotate it into place, ungroup it, or explode it, and then group it again because text is kind of funny if you don't do that. Uh, and then uh, basically resize it, put it in place, and drop it down just a little bit into the into the actual surface. I think 1.5 units. Wire uh, the X-ray mode and see what that looks like. Looks good. Subtract, uh, subtract it, and our solid inspector says we're good. So now all we got to do is take it and go again to Flowify, and there you have our, our, our model. Now everything looks pretty good. But we just need to go in and do a little. Uh, we're going to need to mirror, uh, not mirror, but rotate parts of these things. If we mirror it, we end up uh, getting uh, something that we don't want. So. Uh, so let's go ahead and first let's delete these edges. We don't want these. We don't want this side because when we do uh, try and stitch it up, we'll have these internal faces, which is going to be right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete, get rid of this stuff first. Okay. Uh, okay. So now we're ready to actually get these, rotate these into place. Uh, first, I'm going to mirror and show you what the problem is. So when you mirror it, notice that the text is all wrong. Uh, and it just doesn't, it doesn't, the tire patterns are wrong too. So what we have to do is we take them and rotate them. And remember we had that spoke? That's what the spoke is for. So we're going to go in here, we're going to hit the rotate button, uh, hold the option key down to, to, to copy, make a duplicate of it. Once that's done, uh, ungroup and explode everything. And we've got one right. Uh, let's go do the other one, uh, ungroup and explode them, and group them. And, uh, and now that we've done that, we can, uh, uh, we're going to zoom in and we'll see that we're not, they're not exactly touching each other. So let's just move them so they are touching, touching each other. And let's explode it again, explode it. Now they should all be merged into one object and double click on it and set the smoothing. And we may have to hide some edges. So I use my select curve tool or I, I'm checking for any internal edges that might have been created. There's not any. So use the select curve tool. And hide that. Same thing on the inside. There's actually two of them in there. So, on that. so, so we're in pretty good shape. Uh, that's really it uh, as far as the building of this. Now I'm going to group it, give it a name, and uh, um, basically I'm going to tweak it just a little bit, uh, scale it, move it up uh, so it's sitting on the ground. Actually, I don't put it completely on the ground. I want to have it poking through just a little bit so that it's like a regular tire with a little flat at the bottom. And once that's done, uh, I can go and jump over to Keyshot. Keyshot imports the tire nicely. Let's add a nice rubber texture to it. Let's go in. Keyshot's got this great rounded edges feature, so I'm going to add 0.5, and it's going to give us a little bit of a highlight across all the sharp edges, which really looks good. Change, dragging down the roughness so it won't be quite as bad of a we get a little, little more shine on it. It's a new tire. You can see it actually turned out pretty good. Now I might have wanted to increase the density of the tread, maybe make that the, the sketch up tire uh, indentation a little less. But it's overall, it's definitely a passable tire that can be used. Um, hope you enjoyed it.